Dr. Alfredo Quiñones, or Dr. Q, as you're known around the world. Thank you so much for being with us today at Univision News. Thank you, Mariana. It's quite a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Thank you. And it's an honor to have you here precisely because your story has become the American dream for many immigrants in the U.S. However, if it were up to many of the Republican presidential candidates, you wouldn't have been allowed to cross the border or let alone have access to the resources that have helped you throughout your incredible journey. Um, what is your sense of the current immigration debate and what do you say to those who won't allow people like yourself to seek a better future in this country? Well, I would just say that uh, the world is flat. You know, the economy is changing. Medicine is changing. You know, and I always say, for God's sake, even bacteria, they try to go from one place to another. They migrate and they move. So I would say that it's going to be very challenging to keep our borders completely closed in the United States when we have poverty and need in our neighboring countries in, in Central and South America. I would say that the greatest challenge, Mariana, that exists right now is how do we make it work? How do we make it work for the United States and how do we make it work for the rest of the world and specifically for our Latin American countries? I think that should be the point of the debate, rather whether, whether or not the borders are closed and whether or not we deport you know, 11 to 12 million people out of this country. Um, and you obviously support the DREAM Act um, for obvious reasons. What do you say to those dreamers out there, to those students who want to validate their studies here? What is your message to them? Well, I always, you know, and I have so many students that come to me. You remind me of a story of a young man that came to spend time with me at Johns Hopkins, came from Harvard, who he was crying, he was really upset because he, his dreams of going to medical school were going to be stopped after graduating from Harvard because he didn't have you know, documents uh, to, 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 you know, for, for his citizenship in the United States. And he couldn't get scholarships to go to medical school. And I remember telling him, you know, people from all over the world want to get what you have today as an undergraduate at one of the most prestigious universities. Take advantage of that. If you keep working hard, things are going to work out. So I always tell them, don't give up on those dreams. Keep studying hard. Keep getting good grades. And I can assure you, that there are people who are going to take interest in helping you. And sure enough, two years later, he said that he was able to get a scholarship, and now he's in medical school, and now all his documents are beginning to be processed. So that's what I always say. Don't stop dreaming. The American dream is still attainable, but we can't attain it by working Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, a constant, hard work. A constant battle. I think so. I mean, I know that people criticize me and they say, but how do you expect other people to have your lifestyle? And I said, I chose a profession that allows me to do things that I never dream of. When I was a little boy, and I talk about that in my book, as you know, Becoming Dr. Q, I wanted to be an astronaut, Mariana, and now I navigate the universe, but it's a universe that I can hold between my hands that is called the human brain. And I navigate it just like the astronaut that I wanted to be when I was a little kid. So yes, I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but I don't feel like it's work. It is my passion. It is my privilege to be able to save lives every single day in my profession. Last question is a bit more personal. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you allow me. Uh, by, by watching your interviews in CBS and PR, you've discussed your, your crossing the border as a justified act. Um, then I've heard you say that you, know, you were just thinking of what you were going to eat that day, for example. Um, how do you grapple with this quote unquote you know, criminal act or breaking the law that, uh, that you know, made you come to the US? Are there feelings of remorse? How do you deal with that? And, and you know, that speaks to what many immigrants have to deal with in this country. It's, it's a beautiful question, Mariana. I would say that back then, when I was 18 years old, I was hungry. And I'm not talking about being hungry for success. I literally, my belly was empty. But not just mine. So were the bellies of my parents and my siblings. And all I wanted to do was put food on the table for my family. And it's quite interesting that you ask that question because back then, in the 80s, when I came, what did the country say? Hey, we welcome you. 
we open our doors. You can go and work in the fields, and eventually you're going to become a U.S. citizen 10 years later when I was at Harvard. But it's amazing how we tend to forget that now because the situation, the economic yes. situation in the country is much more challenging. We're looking around and we're making the same mistakes that we have made through hundreds of years, that as soon as everything gets really tough, we look around and we say, who can we blame? Well, immigrants from Mexico and from Latin America are the ones guilty for all the problems, when in reality, we have done over and over through generations. But back then, people didn't question me whether I came legal or illegal. They wanted a hand to pick the tomatoes, to pick the cauliflower, and eventually I advanced myself. So we changed. So is it justified? I don't know if it's justified or not. All I can tell you is that back then, times were different. And all I wanted to do was just have enough food to put on the table of my family. Thank you for your time with us today. We champion your success, and we wish your book, you know, the very best. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you, Mariana. Quite an honor to be here with you.